Welcome back to New Rockstars. This is The Big Question, the show that gives you too much information about how to kill an unkillable Marvel hero until it just becomes downright boring. Because if you're Deadpool, death is something you pray for. I'm Eric Voss. Here with me today is Tommy Bechtold. Hey, man. Hey, he's not the only one praying for death, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare pray for it. I'm going to be praying against death for you so that it counteracts your vote. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. Putting crystals out all over to ward off death. <laughs> Praying for death to take a holiday. She's earned it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Here's the deal, we've gotten confirmation that Deadpool 3 is headed to the MCU with Ryan Reynolds and a script is in the works from the Molyneux sisters. Mm. And when we last saw Deadpool in Deadpool 2, all the way back in 2018, the film featured a memorable suicide montage, even a near-death experience that ended as a kind of Logan parody yes. uh, that was then followed by a share scored time travel <laughs> montage. Oh God, we gotta rewatch that movie. Yes. But now Wade Wilson is crossing over into a cinematic universe that that takes death very, very seriously. Yeah, I'd say. So what is our big question this week? Yeah, Eric, well, with these new settings and surroundings, I need to know, is Deadpool immortal? And if not, how do you kill him? <laughs> I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. Yeah, a great, great question. Wade Wilson became Deadpool when his Weapon X experimentation that was trying to rid him of cancer, at least that's what they told him, they were trying to cure his cancer, mm. it ended up resulting in rapid Wolverine-style regeneration powers, and he can regrow limbs, he can even reattach his head if it is close to his neck, but <laughs> according to comics canon, if his head is detached from his body, Body, for 12 minutes, oh. his brain will run out of oxygen and he will die. Whoa. That's something Wolverine said. If Wolverine says that's how regeneration works, then you know it's right. Because that guy yep. knows his way around the block. There. That's right. Does it hurt? Ah! Ah! Right up Main Street. So, short answer, yes. Deadpool can die. He can actually die in all kinds of ways. He mm. is uh, really just a slightly more durable than average human being. So, any way that you can kill a durable human, you can kill Deadpool. Just to give some fun examples that we know from the comics, Punisher, Frank Castle, shot Deadpool right in the head. He also <laughs> crushed his skull. We saw Deadpool briefly go to heaven there. He was uh, riding a unicorn oh. at the rainbow. It was like, heaven's great. That's nice and then ripped back down <laughs> whoops <laughs> You weren't meant to see that. Carnage uh, tore through Deadpool's midsection. It caused him to bleed out. Huh. Deadpool's arteries have been ripped out Ooh, uh, of his God. body. He has been burned alive. He has been shot through the brain several times. And yes, he has been decapitated many, 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 many times. Oh my God. It's kind of fun. I could watch him die all day. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Oh my god. I can't get past the arteries being ripped out. That to me is... Yeah. Ooh. What does that mean? Is yeah. it like when you hold the weird veins out of a uh, stalk of celery and Ooh. you just feel like, what oh, I am I doing to I was thinking more like, like a sweater string. Like you just pull a little bit and it gets further. <laughs> All of a sudden you're like, oh god, it's way more than I thought. Also, we've seen a bit of this in the Deadpool films. We've mm. seen him die or get close to his version of death in all yes. kinds of horrible ways. In Deadpool 2, there was a montage where he was like drinking Drano and then dived <laughs> off the tall building. It opened with him blowing himself up into pieces. Right. He threw himself into a polar bear pit. As uh, you do. Blood yeah. sprayed everywhere. Well, here is the problem, Tommy. Mm. Or I guess you could say here's a benefit because Deadpool doesn't stay dead after you kill mm. him. So, mm. yes, uh, we kind of pulled a little you know, semantics trick on you there. He mm. can die and he does briefly go to the afterlife, but he always comes back. Mm. So does that make him immortal? Well, I don't know. It depends how you look at immortality. Does it mean that you can't die, you can't leave this plane? Or does that mean that you don't fully stay in that next plane? Why does this work? Deadpool's kind of caught in this in-between stage between mortality and immortality. Mm. He has a kind of glitch when it comes to transitioning to the afterlife. And that comes from Deadpool's weird relationship with death and with 
Thanos. Ooh, yes. Bring it all back to the big dog. It's all about Thanos. See, here's the deal. In the Marvel comics, death isn't just this thing. It's a cosmic entity. It's a female being, mm-hmm. and Thanos is in love with her. Uh, <laughs> Clearly. Actually, in the Infinity Gauntlet comic storyline that the Infinity War and game event was based on, mm. the reason Thanos snaps half of all life from existence is in order to try to woo Lady Death. Yeah, I've done some crazy things to get the attention of a woman. Woman, Eric. I mean, I've never wiped out half of all life in the universe, but, uh, you know, I've sang a few songs at karaoke. Which dusted away half the room. That's right. It made, it, it made the entire bar disappear. <laughs> you know, Tommy, I bet you'd be real fun to watch do karaoke. I'm always the kind of guy who goes up after the really fun guy to do yeah. karaoke and be like, yeah, crowd is warm. Yeah. And then I pick a song that's really awkward to sing karaoke to. Tequila. Uh, and I was like, oh, why did I just pick Billy Jean? What a weird song. <laughs> And they're like, bring Tommy back. And I was like, no, he's gone. He's in the bathroom. He's at home washing his tights. That's the second time I've used that in a new Rockstars video. We have to cut that out. Uh, <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yes. The uh, Infinity War movie changed Thanos' motivation. They they kind of removed Lady Death as an entity, at least so far in the universe. They based Thanos' drive more on, I guess, population control, a form of eco-terrorism, we mm-hmm. could call it. However, now that Deadpool is entering this picture, I'm sure he's gonna have lots of jokes first off how thanos is very similar looking to his old buddy cable Mm -hmm. you know that's gonna come up but from his point of view he also has the opportunity to bring in lady death as a character and put himself in a love triangle with himself lady death and thanos and that can be deadpool's interpretation of the infinity war conflict even if thanos wouldn't even acknowledge that imagine deadpool just saying look thanos we know that you really did this because you're trying to win her over and thanos is like that's not why he did he's like oh yeah you really have a crush on her i know you did she's hot (laughs) so this deadpool is playing the role of like the annoying uncle at thanksgiving that's like trying to like he's his teenage nephew (laughs) but also try to hook up with his girlfriend yeah yeah yeah. well that's like my uncles (laughs) no uncle tommy no (laughs) Wait a second, wait a second. (laughs) Well, if you ain't getting her, I'm going to take her. I used to be a dancer. And the reason I bring this up is that is essentially how it works in the comics. Mm. It's not like Deadpool's participation in this love triangle was always part of the narrative. Deadpool was a total party crasher. In the same way that he was a party crasher in the comics, he could be a party crasher in the MCU Mm. and say, no, look, this is how I see things. And that's exactly how the MCU should and probably will bring him into it. He's going to be a meta, breaking the fourth wall kind of guy. You think the studio would throw us a bone? One that doesn't end up in my mouth. Mm. Who reframes the narrative in his own jokey, satirical way. But in the comics that we're talking about, Deadpool totally falls in love with Lady Death. He considers her his girlfriend, and she is kind of into him as well. (laughs) And this pisses off Thanos. Understandably. I mean, if, if you're the bad boy in the entire cinematic universe and then someone comes in and out bad boys you, like that would be, a, that wouldn't rage anyone. And it uh, pisses off Thanos so much that he curses Deadpool in a specific <laughs> way so that he cannot get huh. anywhere near death, huh. thus creating this kind of cosmic loophole in which Deadpool cannot ever fully die. Oh. So essentially Deadpool's immortality comes from a sort of metaphorical restraining (laughs) order. You've been served. Oh, you're a jerk. However, we should say in a later comic, I think it was 2015, Thanos closed that specific loophole. Mm. He was beating the shit out of Deadpool and he was monologuing specifically about that past choice to restrict him from death and Ah. to give him eternal life and that now he officially gives him back the gift of death. But then that comic continues on so that he kind of brings back Deadpool with cosmic science and necromancy. Uh, But either way, the curse is officially undone. Mm. So where does that leave us when it comes to Deadpool's immortality? Well, I'm sure many of you have commented in the comics that pretty much all comic book characters are at least narratively immortal. (laughs) No one stays dead. Everyone comes back, with the exception of the ones who, like, inspire the hero's origin story. So, like, Thomas and Martha Wayne, Uncle Mm. Ben. You Mm. say everyone can die in comics, but Uncle Ben stays dead. Bucky. Bucky for a while was considered a permanently dead character mm. until Marvel Comics brought him back and then of course in the MCU they brought him back as well. Right. Marvel, the predecessor of Captain Marvel mm. in the comics, Marvel was a Kree warrior who died to become Captain Marvel and then the later comics in 2011 rebooted that so it was Carol Danvers. Either mm. way, the predecessor has to die so that the successor can take over. Right. However, Deadpool 
I think carries a special distinction. Both the version of the comics and the Ryan Reynolds version of the films, he has this situation where his function to his world is completely divorced from the stakes of life and death mm. that govern everyone else. Wow. Enjoy hell, Swamp Mouth. Deadpool isn't really a living, breathing human character, even though we do relate with him. He does have moments that can make you tear up, mm -hmm. but he is a meta cartoon that is designed chiefly to comment and satirize his universe. Yeah. So that ultra violence that we see his body enduring is all part of that parody. It is an element of his character that he must die. He is like Wiley Coyote. He's going to die again and again and again. And John Tucker. He must die. Where are my big Tucker heads here? <laughs> <laughs> Racist trees. Tuck oh, I, we don't want those Tucker heads. Get those Tucker heads <laughs> out of here. We've done stories about UFOs. Yeah, that's true. I call them pity tucks. <laughs> the whole point of his repeated deaths mm. and extreme injuries is so that the reader and the viewer is desensitized to those deaths so that we can just get past that ah. part of it and instead appreciate whatever else he's trying to accomplish. Accomplish. His repeated death is, in a way, a kind of commentary on how, in comics, over the decades, characters die all the time and are just brought back. I'm back, bitches! Yeah. Deadpool is the living embodiment of that commentary on how goofy and ridiculous that is. So, when it comes to how we're going to see him in the MCU, I expect the MCU, at first, to maintain the immortality curse. It can be done in a couple different ways. Maybe they can just use Infinity Stone logic, mm. because that tends to be how they just justify all kinds of things. Where's my eyebrow? Where's my eyebrow? Oh, God damn it. It's a stone. We know that the Infinity War screenwriters wanted to bring in the cosmic universal judge, the Living Tribunal. There was going to be a trial where Doctor Strange dragged Thanos in front of the Living Tribunal, and the Living Tribunal judged him guilty during their whole wizard duel. That ended up not being the case. There is a staff of the Living Tribunal in the Doctor Strange artifacts collection, but it's a there's enough there to say the Living Tribunal, that judge exists somewhere in the cosmos. Maybe Deadpool, as a result of all of his crimes, gets some kind of a plea <laughs> deal huh? with the Living Tribunal where he has to exist in this new universe, but he <laughs> can only die a certain number of times or something like that. Sure, like a video game. Give him five, Mario style. The simplest way is to just go the same route as it is in the comics. Make death, Lady Death, a corporeal or at least existing personified goddess in this hmm. universe. And while it seems a little crazy to go there right now, Deadpool is himself crazy enough to where if you just put him in that conversation and then plop him into the MCU, we're going to go along with it. Now, there were some theories that Meredith Quill, that was Peter Quill's mother, could be Lady Death, that that might mm. be the big Easter egg that James Gunn was hiding in Guardians of the Galaxy. That would pose some hilarious spats between Star-Lord and Deadpool. <laughs> just imagine Chris Pratt and Ryan Reynolds screaming at each other. Super penis. But for now, at least, James Gunn has... Uh, I think shot down the exact terms of that Meredith Quill Lady Death theory. However, he has also hinted at that we have gotten very, very close with our various interpretations of Meredith Quill. There is something to Meredith Quill, and mm. it might not be Lady Death, it might not be Eternity, it might not be the other figures that we've talked about, but there is some secret with her that James mm. Gunn is, is brewing. Reveal your secrets. So as we wait to find out exactly how Deadpool will fit in the MCU and how unkillable he will be, I will just say that all the pieces are in place to justify it as closely to the Marvel comics without weirding us out too much, but delivering a ton of laughs along the way. So in conclusion, Deadpool is immortal, Yay! but not unkillable. Okay. And that might change when he enters the MCU. Ah. Well, that makes, I can kind of wrap my brain around that. He's immortal, but he's not unkillable. So he can have a lot of fun in between spats of immortality. I'm touching myself tonight. And yeah. that's what makes him fun. Yeah. That's why we love him. All right, uh, let's uh, thank some friends who helped us make this episode, starting with our friends at ExpressVPN. So earlier this year, more than 100 high profile Twitter users got their accounts hacked. We're talking passwords, email address, phone numbers, and more were all taken from people like uh, Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Kanye West, those kinds of attacks are going to get more frequent and severe. It's a brave new world that we live in. And unfortunately, it's not just Twitter, uh, Facebook, eBay, Uber, all of these things have leaked the credit card info of billions of users. Look, if someone can hack Elon Musk, imagine how easy it is to hack you. That is why we use ExpressVPN to safeguard 
our personal data online. According to recent reports, hackers can make up to $1,000 from selling someone's personal information on the dark web, making people like me and you lucrative targets. ExpressVPN is an app that funnels your data through secure cryptid tunnel. No matter what device you use, you can have peace of mind every time you use the internet. The app connects with just one click. It is lightning fast. And the best part is ExpressVPN works on up to five devices simultaneously so you and your whole family can stay protected. If a breach can happen to powerful individuals, it can easily happen to you. So protect yourself with ExpressVPN, the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. And if you visit expressvpn.com slash big Q right now, you can arm yourself with an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That is expressvpn.com slash big Q. Visit expressvpn.com slash big Q to learn more. We also want to thank our friends at DoorDash for helping us make this episode. Deadpool might have unlimited time, but you do not. Save time, give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you are craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy, just open the DoorDash app, you choose what you wanna eat and your food will be left safely outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the US and Puerto Rico, Canada, Australia, you can choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle or Wendy's in the Cheesecake Factory. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery just open the doordash app select your favorite local restaurant and your food will be left at your door doordash deliveries are now contactless to keep the communities we operate in safe right now our listeners can get five dollars off and zero delivery fees on their first order of fifteen dollars or more when you download the doordash app and enter the code big question that's five dollars off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the doordash app and the app store and enter the code big question don't forget let's go to big question for five dollars off your first order with doordash all right now comes the time for a bite-sized question that Tommy and I are going to try to chow down on. I don't know why I said it that way. I feel weird. I was all for it. Okay, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to lean into that. Yeah. Andy Banani, NRPI, yeah. a good friend of ours on Discord, asks, is it possible to break a lightsaber <sighs> blade in half? So glad you asked, Annie Badani. Let's talk about when a lightsaber hilt is damaged. The blade shuts off and stops working. We saw this when Obi-Wan mm -hmm. sliced off Maul's saber, and Phantom Menace, of course, or when yeah. Anakin's lightsaber was damaged by the Genosis machinery. In The Last Jedi, Kylo and Rey both tried to force pull Luke's lightsaber in opposite directions, causing it to split in a flash of light. The lightsaber was broken, and Rey later repaired it. Like a true yeah. crafty latchkey kid <laughs> with too much time and no parental supervision. And a lot of duct tape. However, in this case, I think we can assume that the question is asking if the lightsaber blade can be split vertically or down the shaft of the laser blade, like slicing a hot dog the long way, creating two delicious hot dogs. No, two droopy, thinner lightsaber noodles. Two loodles, as I call them. In order to answer this, we have to look under the hood of the engineering of a lightsaber, something we actually do know quite a bit about. A lightsaber hilt houses a crystal chamber which contains kyber crystals. These power the lightsabers, given its color, and are unique to the Jedi or Sith who built the saber. Energy from these crystals is harnessed via a generator converting it to plasma. Closer to the tip of the hilt is a magnetic field emitter. This releases a magnetic field that contains the flow of energy from the crystals, which takes the form of a tightly looped arc of plasma. The plasma passes through the magnetic stabilizing ring. This is what actually shapes the blade and holds the plasma in place. Okay, so when we when the lightsaber is emitted, that sound that it makes is actually plasma spewing out of the tip of this thing, right. but it is held in place by this uh, magnetic That's field. That's right, magnetic field emitter. Uh -huh. baby. You gotta have them. I got one on my Chevy Cruze. Another <laughs> lightsaber or Beskar weapon could not split the magnetic field itself. They repel a lightsaber blade just by counteracting that magnetic field. It's not like one uh -huh. jousting pole splintering another jousting pole. You know, you're just gonna it's not like two yeah. hot dogs hitting each other and Oh, what am I doing? This is terrible what I'm doing. Don't... It's not like this, Blur guys. that out. It's not like this, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, okay, however, <laughs> if you were to damage the... However, if you were to damage the magnetic stabilizing Ring, that would rupture the control of the shape of the energy emission. The magnetic field uh. would be removed, but the plasma would still stream out, blasting extreme oh. heat in all directions, melting the lightsaber handle itself and destroying the crystal chamber and generator until the process stops. It is incredible 
that we have this much scientific information on a fictional weapon. It's really scary. People build their own lightsabers, yeah. yes, right? Yes, Hacksmith on YouTube. You can see they, they built one and put it through like some metal. It was crazy. The only thing keeping us from destroying ourselves are the existence of kyber crystals. If That's they exist right. in the real world, people yeah. would be, yep, ready to go. Final piece. Oh my God. <laughs> and everyone yeah, dies. they'd be like, instead of like backyard wrestling injuries, it'd be people that were just sawed in half during like amateur lightsaber exhibitions. Yeah. So... To answer the question, no, you cannot cleanly split a lightsaber in half, but you can bust one up so bad that everyone in the room burns alive. So, yeah. Win win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense, right? What you're hitting is like a beam of plasma that's right. held in place by a magnet. You can't split that beam in half. Mm -hmm. You can just like break it so that it all spills everywhere. Right. But it's not like the old uh, way. I assume that's our asking, right? Like if you're split it in half, that's that's where it goes. It, it can't do that. You can't. Yeah. It's hard to do that even with metal swords. Right. Which is good because otherwise it would just be uh, Fantasia brooms all over the place. And that's then right. people just keep splitting lightsabers in half and oh, have too many lightsabers. Da, 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 da. Everyone is dying. Whoa! And then there's me in my Mickey robes just conducting. Stop conducting, Tommy. I can't help it. It's the artist in me. It's catching. All right. Uh, we have time for one final box. Oh, scraps question. Scraps. Staying on the theme of Deadpool's immortality. Yes. Have you ever had a near death experience that made you realize that you weren't immortal? I have. Uh, and it happened to uh -oh. me when I was like 14 years old, which I think is the age when you are almost the most immortal in your mind. I used to get really bad strep throat and like throat infections. So the doctor was oh. like, you got to get your tonsils out. So I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. My mom said we should do this. So they were like, you know, it's very safe. There's like a literal chance that it won't heal. Because what they do is they just snip them out and then they let them kind of heal. They don't stitch them automatically. It's a pain in the neck to do that. So they're mm -hmm. like, we'll take them out. And then if you have any problems, you know, we can come in and stitch them up later. But it should be fine. Totally fine. So they take them out and that goes fine. You know, obviously I wake up groggy with a sore throat for a couple of days. So I'm home recovering. I should say the next... Two minutes of this story are gonna get very gross. Oh, oh, oh. Did I get any in my mouth? You're squeamish. Let's fast forward to this. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> so I get up one morning and I have kind of what I, it feels like just like a lump in my throat. So I go to the bathroom and I cough up like what I just thought was like some, some phlegm. And I proceed to do that like five or six more times throughout the, the morning. Just these like getting these just like it's like I thought I was like congested. So finally at like two in the afternoon, I go in and cough up another what I thought was a phlegm ball and just exorcist projectile vomit blood all over <gasps> the mirror. Uh, what I had been coughing up were blood clots from Ooh. the where the thing in my throat was supposed to be healing. And I was just hemorrhaging blood. Uh, so oh my God, I Tommy. Called, my I called my mom in and I was very scared and we went to the emergency room and they were like, yeah, go ahead and get in line. And I just, at the time where they were just going to like cast me aside in the emergency room, I just happened to like throw up again into a towel and they were like, okay, get him into, <laughs> get him into a room. Oh my so, God. So, so what had happened is the uh, artery had ruptured in the back of my throat and the doctor came in and he had to stick a the biggest syringe I've ever seen in my life in the back to just paralyze the artery so it would stop bleeding so they could then figure oh, out what to do. Yeah. Now I'm 14 and have like zero idea of like, I just think I'm like, I'm like, this is unfortunate, but at no point am I scared until I look at my mom who is just like, I've never seen more terrified in my life. And she just looks at me and goes, just don't die. You can have whatever you want. And in my 14 year old oh, wisdom, I no. said, I want to be able to watch Monday Night Raw. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're like Brendan Dassey, like, can I get out in time for I, WrestleMania? Which was like, I mean, I could have been like a Mustang in two years when I could drive, but I was like, no more harassing me when I want to watch The Undertaker. <laughs> so... You know, the, uh, ultimately, science did its job, and the, the artery was paralyzed, and they went in, stitched it up, and I spent the next, like, year and a half of my life thinking it was going to happen again. Like, I constantly would have, like, phantom oh things God. in my throat being like, oh, it's going to rupture again, and it never did uh, yet, knock on wood. But, yeah, that was my uh, that was my <laughs> near-death experience. <laughs> the aftermath was I, I couldn't stand up for a couple of weeks, so I lost so much blood. They, they said because I was so young, they didn't have to give me a transfusion because I could... Regener I could make the blood back. It took a long time, so I was like bedridden for like a month. <laughs> oh my so, god! So that made me understand that human beings are fragile. <laughs> wow, Tommy, yeah. I I should have gone first. Yours is insane. <laughs>
<laughs> that, that's like a, a Sam Raimi horror freak show moment yeah. there. Oh, it was so not visceral. Good. <laughs> I would be terrified. Uh, 14 yeah. years old, hemorrhaging blood all over the mirror. Good lord. Yeah. Okay, uh, my mine wasn't anywhere near as close to death as yours is. <laughs> it was just like the first time I had that switch from being like, I'm gonna live forever! And then like, oh, I'm bro a broken baby. <laughs> um, uh, I was 13 years old, mm. and I did karate as a kid. Oh, yeah. Tell me, I don't know if you knew this, I am technically a black belt yeah. in an offshoot of uh, Taekwondo called Tong Sudo. It's like a another oh. Korean kind of aerobic martial art that's great for Oh my god, I did not cardio. know that. That's awesome. I am, but anyone can destroy me if I face it <laughs> in battle. I have not been practicing it. I was I was not good it's at like it then. It's like riding a bike. You'll get it back. Yeah. There was like two and a half years where I was extremely disciplined in this, and yeah. this is where it all came to an end. Oh god. So um, my brother, who's seven years older than me, we would wrestle a lot, and mm. I started to feel like I picked up some moves. We both know I'm training to become a cage fighter. I knew how to sweep the leg. Yeah. I could take him out. I, I could stay <laughs> up with him but he was like twice my body weight he was working mm. out a lot in college he mm. was in he was in good shape to take me down and he was trying to watch march madness on tv sure and he was he was about to go back to school he was at home with us that weekend he's about to drive back to college and he was just trying to watch uh fsu play in a march madness game i go oh matt are you watching this game of this game <laughs> and i stood in front of the tv and i just started to shake my butt and i'm like oh am i in your way it was probably like you know 12 seconds left on the clock of course i really timed it and i was like oh i'm sorry are you trying to watch this and he's like eric if you don't get out of the way of the tv i'm gonna drop you and i'm like i'd like to see you try <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> thought I could take him. I said, come down here and see what happens if you try to hit me. And he's like, okay. Uh, and he started to stand up and I had like a big glass of milk and I'm like, no, 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 man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna smell my milk. And then I, I kind of just wanted to wrestle with him before he went back. And then he totally dropped me and I fell in a specific way oh. that I landed on the ground, my shoulder and my head at the ground at the same time, Ooh. popping my clavicle, oh. I broke my collarbone. Oh no. Mm, one of the most painful bones you can break. <laughs> oh God, no. Ooh, oh, yeah, I'd never broken a bone before. Yeah, and that's a tough one to be like your hell. first break, I'll tell you that much. Oh my God, ooh. <laughs> and I laid on the ground screaming, my brother was freaked out like, I killed yeah, him. what have I done? <laughs> What have I done? And I was like, you killed me, Matt. You killed me. You ruined my life. <laughs> I will have my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was supposed to test for whatever the next belt was that weekend. Oh, no. But I didn't. I missed the test. So I was out and I had to go to school. When you break your collarbone, I don't know if they have an, a better sling now. Yeah. But you have to wear the weirdest looking sling. Oh, yeah. To where there's like a strap that goes up here. There's a yes. strap that goes around there. There's like another strap. You look like you're in half a straight jacket. I don't think that the that has improved. I think that that it's like a almost like a cape, weirdly, isn't it? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. there's like a weird. Yeah, yeah it's a it's bit insane. of a Phantom of the Opera effect. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> but they give you that, and uh, they they do it because the clavicle's so weird the way mm. it's positioned, and you have to have like downward pressure mm. to make sure the bone heals correctly. I went from being such like a little badass that was completely undeserved to feeling like, no one touched me. People need to help me carry my textbooks. <laughs> and I almost got addicted to Vicodin. Oh God! Whoa, whoa <laughs> second twist. I, I forgot that this is part of the story. Oh my God. So I, they they prescribed me, you know, because you, you can get over the counter Motrin. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could still get over the counter Motrin. That mm -hmm. stuff's powerful enough. Oh, I, yeah. They gave me a bit of Vicodin because you would wake up in the middle of the night and when your body shifts in tremendous pain. So they're like, just pop a Vicodin. So I would wake up at three in the morning screaming, ah! ah, ah and would like reach for the Vicodin and then like pop, o pop in a couple pills. And then I ran out of the bottle and I was like, mother, I need need to refill this prescription. She says, we're not going to get more of this stuff. <laughs> this is like, you're 13 years old. And I was like, but I need it. <laughs> and I got so violently enraged. And I was like, I would wake up now. I'm like, the Motrin isn't strong enough. And I would scream at night. Because that Vicodin, man, that yeah. out like a light. Oh, and yeah. that stuff. It does the it's, trick. It's too a reason powerful. Why love it. And ever since then, I finished out whatever the next belt was. And then I, I stopped doing karate from there forward. And I have never been in a fist fight, even counting the moment at, out of my wimpy rage, I, I swung at Philip one time on a road trip. Uh, that was stiff. <laughs> and then I'm you. You got this. 
I did not say you <laughs> got this. <laughs> I've wanted to swing at Philip before. Don't worry about it. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, it's only on road trips. He likes to <laughs> pester you while you're driving, and then you're not even in control of yourself. You just turn into a monster. <laughs> I'm going to get a text from <laughs> Philip. When did you want to swing at me? <laughs> <laughs> never, father. Never. It was a joke. I was just trying to fit in. <laughs> Eric, one thing, I, one thing your story tells me is that you are ready for your narrative arc on the fourth season of Cobra Kai when you come in yeah. and redeem yourself. <laughs> and then immediately break my collarbone again. Eric Voss was the hottest martial artist in Florida until a clavicle took him down. And now he's back <laughs> to take on the Cobra Kai. Oh, that's going to be me. Ah, uh, yeah, that's me. Cast me in Cobra Kai. That'd be great. Yes. Well, none of us are immortal and neither is this show because that is <sighs> it for this episode of The Big Question. What a fun time this has been. I learned so much about you, Tommy, from yeah, that too story. Much. <laughs> my heart goes out for you as a, you. as a younger man. Thank God we all yeah. recover. Eh? Your clavicle's fine. My throat is golden. Never got any complaints about my throat. Trust me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Tommy, it has been fun uh, joining you this episode. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, follow, right. follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtold. Follow me at E A Voss. Uh, be sure to follow New Rock Stars on socials. You can send us your big questions using the hashtag Big Question. You can also subscribe to this podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a nice rating review if you don't mind. Subscribe to New Rock Stars here on YouTube. Get that notification bell, and uh, we will see you next time. Stay safe, Goodbye. everyone. Yes. <laughs>